because um, I was just at a CAA conference and there's a curator, or no, it was an artist that was there and he was saying, and he comes from an academic background, but he was like, he was producing work and then he realized that people were having more of an emotional reaction to it than a rational, um, rational reaction. And he actually said I hadn't thought much about the emotional aspects of art. <laughs> and I'm like, that's amazing, right? Yeah. That somebody would admit that. And um, Jerry Saltz has been, when I think about his critical contribution, um, I criticize him a lot. I don't agree with a lot of his um, perceptions of history. Mm -hmm. um, but like Andy Warhol, I don't know why. It's just like he, he, yeah. Anyway, I don't. Yeah. I'm not fully aware. I mean, I know who Jerry Saltz is yeah. vaguely, uh, yeah. but I don't know any of his like well, personal him political a freak beliefs. And Warhol, in, okay. yeah, not well, a fan. Warhol, a freak. <laughs> and a freak is a powerful word, right? Mm -hmm. Like he was an outcast, or mm -hmm. or um, you know, just odd. And it's like. When you do that to artists, you know, that's that's a bit toxic, in my opinion, mm -hmm. because we're all free. Yeah, I, I, everybody, <laughs> like, artists or not, you know, yeah, we all have our... Yes, exactly, yeah. everybody, you know. <laughs> Jerry so, Saltz has got his thing. Oh my God, right? So, <laughs> yeah. but I was just like, and I just didn't feel like it was a very accurate reading of his mm -hmm. time and his... He was a visionary. Yeah, I mean, I'm, you know, I'm very much yeah. into Andy Warhol, and I think... You know, he made videos of himself eating. Yeah, like, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. One of the the one of the things that gave me you know even more respect, or I think you know, as as a teenager or something before I was even hugely familiar with his work outside of you know Campbell soup cans, um, was there was a a documentary or some kind of a long series on I believe PBS talking about his life starting from childhood and sort of, you know, his loneliness and sensitivity. Oh, wow. And there's a story that has always stayed with me, and I hope that I'm recalling it at least somewhat correctly, but that his uh, father passed on and there was, they lived in a small town or there was something where they, he couldn't be buried immediately. Um, wow. So they had to leave the body in the house, in like the kitchen oh, on the wow. table or something. And Andy would, like, you know, sit underneath it or, like, you know, sort of be oh close to him in that way. And I thought, like, wow, what an incredible emotional thing that is to know to then have a context for understanding what somebody does. Yeah. Like, you know, his, his obsession later on in his practice with, like, taking photographs of, of crime scenes, especially suicides... You know, I don't know if you're familiar with it, with that part Not of his work, right. but yeah, like yeah, yeah. living in New York, right. you have a lot of people jumping yeah. out of buildings. So he would, you know, yeah, have his yeah. police scanner and listen to it, and then rush to the scene wow. to take photos. Wow. And you know, there's yeah, there's definitely something with you know that we all have this kind of curiosity and fascination with with death not only with other people but with our own mortality right. um, yeah. and I think that's a beautiful thing to think about all the time because what yeah it could happen anytime yeah, yeah and yeah. it doesn't have to be you know in western culture we have and most people do think about it so when yeah I, when I in a negative people, way yeah yeah Oh, I guess. Yeah. I think, well, people are afraid to, you know, yeah. get old. They're afraid to die eventually. Mm -hmm. They're afraid of all the things that they want to accomplish, you know. Uh, afraid of the things that they'll lose, the people that they'll lose in their lives. Yeah. And it's all, it's difficult it's stuff to deal with. Right. But there's definitely a lot of power in reframing that conversation and thinking yeah. about it in you know, a way of like, well, what can we do with each other at the time that we're here, like in these bodies, you know, and like, mm -hmm. how, how can we come closer to like realizing that kind of oneness that exists with mm -hmm. all of us, mm -hmm. which is, you know, a big part of why I don't want to sort of like, 
proselytize any specific political message or anything, you know, because I, I don't want to isolate anyone who would look at the work, say, like a, you know, a right wing Republican from Alabama. Right. Like, I don't see myself as separate from that person. Right. We might, you know, know, believe different things or have different ideas, but mm-hmm. fundamentally we're the same person, you know, and if I can if I can extend out that like love and understanding to them, I think that is such a powerful thing to do, especially now when we're all just becoming more and more divided. If we can find ways to come together and have discussions, not about the politics themselves, but about ourselves and about each other. Yeah. Yeah. Because I think through that people realize that, you know, they share the same fears and the same hopes and dreams. We have the same needs. Yeah. And right. Mostly. Yeah. You know, the basics. We need to eat and sleep and, (laughs) you know. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's beautiful. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you for... I don't know if there's anything else we need to talk about. Uh, Yeah, you know. know. Yeah, like, (laughs) wow. Yeah, it's pretty powerful. (laughs) I, I love getting to know everybody like I just oh, love yeah. everyone in a way Me even too. the people who I know everybody I'm challenge so, you I like, you have to like love I like them hide my affection for people yeah <laughs> <laughs> right like, uh, I'm like okay yeah yeah I know. yeah yeah I just want to yeah. like go around people and be like I love you like you're so <laughs> you know and just like um yeah. <laughs> which I think it's easy. It's easier for us to like do that for for strangers or like people who we've never met. Like we can think about these artists or you know whatever. And be like I love them. Like yeah. they yeah. they inspire me and they're right. like you know. It's and, a little easier. Yeah, yeah it is. Um, That's true. But yeah. at the same time, like if you were very close to that person in real life and if you had known them since they were a child, like you yeah. might have more complex feelings about them. So it's more oh, of a right. challenge to oh, okay. to find that love for the other person. But I think that's such a great practice to do that in our daily lives with people we encounter, people who challenge us to like try and think of what can they be teaching us. Yes. You know? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I I had a I spoke to someone recently who was saying, um, when people are oppositional to you mm-hmm. when you think they're your enemy, that Lincoln said, keep your friends close and your enemies closer. And the way that I had always interpreted that was, you watch them. <laughs> <laughs> right? You watch those. Don't turn your back. Like, you know. <laughs> but um, but the, this person was like, you make them your friend. Yeah. You make them your friend. And I was just like, oh. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. And I think that's, yeah. <laughs> we have that opportunity in art. And that's a art. beautiful transformation. I yeah. Think. Like, we both adore transformations, mm-hmm. right? And that. Is like a wonderful one. You make your enemy your friend. Yeah, for real. <laughs> yeah, and I think. Uh, yeah. Uh-huh. You know, one of the that that is one of the one of the things that we've been talking about this whole time that like power of of art and creative yeah. expression to do that. I so I didn't go to uh, I didn't go to art school um, mm-hmm. in really any way for most of my life. The, like 90, 90 something more percent of my life, I didn't have access to museums or galleries or anything oh, like really? that. Wow. Yeah, okay. and I also didn't really have access to really good. human beings. <laughs> you know, like yeah, oh, um, okay. like oh, really grew up people, isolated. Maybe. Just any people, yeah. okay. any people oh, wow. grew up in a really small community, and even outside of that small community, outside of it, on the fringes, and then very isolated there. Oh. Um, and just like not with other kids around, not with any like wow. like minded people, really nothing to tether any kind of. So you were alone. Yeah, a lot. yeah. very, very much. And you taught yourself a lot. Yeah, and I watched movies. <laughs> that was my everything. We had like, you know, a lot of movie channels and a lot of VHS tapes, and I just became obsessed with film. And like starting chronologically, like I started with classic films, wow. and until I was like. 15, I refused to watch anything that wasn't black and white or... <laughs> oh, that's so neat. Yeah, and, uh, and still, that's a, a deep a love that yeah continues yeah, to this yeah. day. And something I'm so grateful to cinema as one of the great art forms for 
teaching me how to relate to other people. I mean, yeah. just that, that power of being able to completely put thing. yourself into someone else's shoes for like an hour and a half or two hours. Right. And how do they see the world, you know? Yeah. And I think that, you know, is the best way that we can strengthen empathy and like compassion among each other. Right. Yeah, I'm sure I'm saying the same stuff over and over in different ways it. about I love it. <laughs> it's like different paths to the yeah. to the to the heart. Mm-hmm. As you put it when you came in mm-hmm. the other day, you were like something about the heart. It was about the I don't heart. remember, yeah. but I'm glad it was <laughs> good. <laughs> And I was literally oh, hanging heart paintings. Oh. And, I was like, and you offered to help me. And I was like, that's just, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> She'll be like, you pulled these out because I said heart. <laughs> no, I love it. Yeah. Uh, I love synchronicity. You know, it was like Carl Jung yeah. coined it. But now, now, now we've, we've made that connection. So, yeah. yeah. That's great. <laughs> Very cool. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, is there anything you, else you want to say that you... That you really wanted to say? I don't know. I, I think know. that's... So, so because you knew that I was going to ask you about who your influences were. Yeah. And so you're saying it was basically the cinema. It was cinema. Cinema, yeah. Yeah. That was everything. Cinema and literature. Were there um, particular characters or directors that you just loved? I, or so it's, it's morphed through mm-hmm. the years. I mean, it... And I still have so much respect and fondness for all of the people who have taught me things, whether I've known them personally or not. Yeah. Uh, but definitely one of, a huge person for me when I was younger was Charlie Chaplin and like his character, wow. The Little Tramp. Oh, Someone who is so yeah. like sensitive and so altruistic and, and wants to do good and wants to like, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. Even and downtrodden characters who are trying to get by and they're struggling and you yeah. know, uh, and there is such an incredible, you know, sensitivity that he expressed those needs with and like, I mean the the beautiful dance with the with the bread rolls you know it's mm-hmm. like what what a what a wonderful sweet genuine way of like expressing a need to be to be seen or to entertain yourself for others you know and I think as a kid I definitely did a lot of that kind of stuff to try and like how do I break this awkward silence or like how do I comfort the people around me who are in pain you know by how do you change the moment yeah like doing yeah. something silly or making myself into some kind of strange yeah. spectacle, you know? Um, so Charlie Chaplin, a huge influence. Um, you know, mm-hmm. Jimmy Stewart, another one of those characters yeah. that they're just like, mm-hmm. in my opinion, you know, just an ultimate, like, strong, charismatic, like, well-meaning mm-hmm. person. Mm-hmm. Um and then as as I was, you know, watching more and more films over over the years, I kind of started expanding into more like modern <laughs> stuff. So David Lynch is a huge inspiration for me. Uh-huh. I saw Mulholland Drive, which is still my favorite Lynch film to this day, when I was like 11 or something, when it came out when I was a kid. Uh, and I was just, I mean, I'm so grateful that films weren't censored <laughs> in oh, my oh, house growing up. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Either. And I, I instantly <laughs> just know. loved it. And oh. I think when we're children, you know, before we grow up to be adults who overanalyze everything and make every over intellectualize, mm-hmm. mm-hmm. I was able to like immediately understand exactly the plot of this, you know, really wild David Lynch film where the adults around me were just like and I was like, oh well, clearly, you know, it's it's this and that, and you know, and it's just so funny to think back to that to that moment of you know this childhood where we, before we've heaped on all this extra shit to try and like climb out of to get to that that pure awareness, mm-hmm. and you know, and yeah, with the self. And even even as we're kids and that yeah. stuff's getting piled onto us, <laughs> yeah. it can be so hard yeah. to not lose sight of it completely. Yeah. And that, you know, 
that's what film and literature and those things did. It allowed me to like see that there is a world outside of the things that I was experiencing to like know there was something else and to yeah. know there was something different that I could strive for other than the, you know, like really intense issues that were going on around me, whether That's it was with substances or, you know, yeah, depression. I never really thought yeah. about how people are restricted to the lives that they're born into. Yeah. And the community and often don't get a chance to see other communities and mm-hmm. other lifestyles and other I mean I, I I know it but I never thought about the power of seeing another you know yeah. community 